Autofill can use external layers for two things. First, you could set a external layer as a growth source, or you could use a layer as a speed map. Let's go and choose layer here. And now we get this layer panel and we can create a layer. What that will do is create a solid layer as a growth source. It will set it to continuous rasterization. It will set that in here under the source layer. The only thing it can't do is change this menu here because um, plugins don't have access to this, which is unfortunate, but that's life. So I'd recommend setting it to effects and masks because just so you want to use this layer as a growth source, um, you'll probably be using masks or effects to do that. Now, After Effects versions under 2017 don't have access to inherit these, so they're just going to inherit the source, which is totally different behavior. And in fact, you'll need to pre-compose your layer uh, to inherit any masks or effects, which is unfortunately a pain. Now, the next thing that's very important when working with external layers is to continuously rasterize or not, which is this button here. And essentially it's going to make the behavior of the layer very different. So for example, if I apply fractal noise to this layer, uh, if I move the layer, the noise is not going to move with the layer. However, if I turn it off, well, the noise is going to move with the layer. Now let's just go into our text here and set this. We've got this as a source. I'm going to use effects and I'm going to use the Luma. And what I want to do is view the growth. Okay, so now we've got an issue. The um, growth is offset between where the layer actually is and uh, where Autofill thinks it is. And that's because we're not inheriting the transforms of this text growth. To inherit transforms, you need it to be set to continuously rasterize. And now if I turn this layer on, I'm going to set it to 1% opacity just so that I can move it around. Uh, you'll notice that it is reflected correctly inside of autofill, which is perfect. That's what we want. So generally, I recommend you would have this continuous rasterization set. Now I have another example. This is a logo, which uh, I have, and I'm going to apply autofill to this. And I'm going to use that as a speed map. So I want the growth. I want the effects and masks as a speed map. I'm going to view the speed map, but I don't see anything. So the reason for that is, is if I start to move, I'll turn this back on and I'll start to move it around. Okay. Only now can we see the speed map. So we've got another offset between the speed map and where autofill thinks it is, even though the growth is set to continuously rasterize. And that's because now we have the autofill source layer itself is not set to continuously rasterize. Again, we have a discrepancy between the transforms. So in this case, we would need to turn on continuous rasterization on the source layer itself for everything to work as expected. Generally, if you um, are getting a result in autofill that doesn't look right, the view buttons are going to help you with that because that's going to show you what autofill is using to generate the final result, which might be different to what you're seeing, just depending on, you know, certain things such as continuous rasterization. These are just really helpful for debugging essentially. But what happens if you're using say a logo or a layer that um, you've imported as an image where you can't actually turn on continuous rasterization? What you'll need to do is basically go replace with precomp and then you can set it to continuous rasterization. So we talk about uh, continuous rasterization in more detail in the um, autofill performance video. So if you're interested in that, uh, I would definitely recommend checking that video out. It's pretty dense, but it, it goes into um, how continuous rasterization works and affects autofill in a bit more detail. And the final thing that we need to consider when using external layers as sources in autofill is if those sources are animated, caching will likely be incorrect. And again, we explained this uh, in great detail in the performance video, but uh, to summarize, I'm just going to basically come in here to this mask and set an expression for the expansion to time times five. So now this, um, this is growing. What I've done is changed it from a speed map to the growth source. So now we have our um, noise being the growth for this logo. And if I jump around the composition, I'm going to get some incorrect results. So let me just preview this. Well, that was actually correct. And it's probably because this is not, um, not drastic enough. So now it's pretty drastic. And if I jump around the composition, I'm going to start seeing some glitches. So let me just preview this. Yeah, you'll see the glitches. And that's because um, the, the external layer that we used is animated. And if we want to get a correct result, we need to make sure we hit re-simulate each time. 
and now our result is correct. So again, if you want to learn why that is, check out the um, performance video where we explain that. But otherwise, I think that's about it for using external layers. If you still have a question, make sure you check out the frequently asked questions on the Autofill Wiki. And if you have a question that's that we haven't answered there, then just get in contact with us and um, hopefully we can answer that and also add it to the uh, knowledge base that we have. And that's gonna help um, new users get answers quicker.